Hi, I'm Tom. In one of my previous videos, I unboxed one of these, which is a Button Plus. And I haven't quite decided where I'm going to install this little piece of hardware yet, but I'm itching to give it a go. So I thought it might be interesting to set it up on my desk, power it up, and just have a general play with it and see what it can do. So in preparation for this video, I had a quick look at the Button Plus website. And unfortunately, there's not a whole lot of documentation up there. There's some sections in the main documentation about you know, how to connect it all up, um, setting up the MQTT, uh, how to connect the button plus to Wi-Fi. And then they also mention um, some MQTT details. That's all up on uh, GitHub. I had a quick read through this and I'll be honest, I couldn't really make a lot of sense. There seems to be a lot of information missing. Things like, uh, you know, the naming conventions, for example, like what's the sequence number? What's the device ID? It doesn't kind of give you any information about that. I've got it all set up here on my desk. So let's take a look and we'll try and we'll power it up and we'll see what we can get working. So I'm just going to switch to my overhead camera. And in front of me here, you can see this is the main board. And I ran through this uh, in the unboxing. And then we've got <clears throat> the four different modules. So there's the main display module, which is an LCD. And then there's three button modules. And each of these button modules has a display on each side. It's got a button and it has uh, some LEDs and stuff connected to it as well. So if we take a look at the main board, that's the USB-C that I'm going to use to power the board up. But if we look at the back, we can see there's the four connectors. So, so based on the picture um, on the website, we can essentially connect these four modules onto that. So each of the modules has an arrow on the back, which points up and using the text as the direction, I'm just going to assemble these. So these just kind of push in. Hopefully you can kind of see, oh, yeah, so just click and it should just click in, I think. So that's sort of clicked in. Obviously, it's very wobbly, uh, but there is a, a proper base, which I've shown in the unboxing video, and that will hold all this together. But let's just connect it up for now. Get one. And last but not least is this one. And this should pop apart. Okay, yep, yep. So click that in, okay. So that's it assembled now. As I've said, it's very, very wobbly, but that's okay, because we're just gonna work at that at our desk. And what I'll do now is I'll get some power and we'll power it up. Now I have my iPad here beside me because the documentation describes how the Button Plus will create a little local Wi-Fi network that we'll use to send in um, the Wi-Fi credentials. So let's go ahead and power it up. Okay, we've got some lights flashing. Awesome, okay, so we've got some labels and, and button text has appeared, and it's given me some information to say that the Wi-Fi is not connected, which is perfect. It's also showing Amsterdam, which I guess is a nod to its creator. So I'll jump onto my iPad now and a button plus uh, Wi-Fi access point has appeared which I'll connect to and then that's actually opened hopefully you can see that so that's opened a captive portal so we can see various bits of information about the device and what we want to know is configure a new access point I'll need to grab my password from my password manager which I'll do off screen all right, so I'm sending the credentials to it now and it's updated. I can see a clock on there now. And it actually presents, hopefully you can kind of see that, but there's an IP address and it's even picked up the temperature. So that should be the temperature of the internal sensor. So if I now jump back to the web, and I will 
navigate to that IP address. We shall hopefully see a configuration page. Okay, so this is now where we will be able to set up um, everything on the device. So we've got some general settings. So we've got a device name, it's got a location, so it's got kind of color for the buttons and everything that are listed there. You can see that kind of yellow um, on the, the labels here. I'm sorry it's not very it's not very bright. Maybe there's a maybe there's a brightness. Ah which there is so we can see a display brightness there. So let's crank that up to a hundred. Okay, maximum it says is 100, but allows me to pick 110, okay. And I will save to device. And if we now look at it, yeah, I think that's a little bit, a little bit brighter. Uh, okay, so that's, okay, so that's that, so. It's telling me there's two options configured. Okay, so that's obviously the location. So it's pulling back the date time. And it's pulling back the temperature. And it also seems to have some positioning. So that must be relative to the display here. Uh, you'll notice too, this is actually mirroring what's being displayed. Um, on the device if, so if I pop back to the screen yeah so that's quite that's quite cool isn't it okay so that's done uh, we've got our we've got our eight buttons so that's obviously these so those eight buttons obviously these and if we do look on the back I think I've done I think I showed this there's actually a little click a little clickable button in there so it's not actually on the front so these must kind of oscillate a little bit as you push it down um, but that's all right so let's let's jump back to the web and what i'm interested in now is the mqtt brokers so it's already connected to a broker and i think that's probably where it's pulling in some data so they've got their own uh, this looks like they've got their own button plus broker, but I want to add in my own home assistant broker. So let's try and do that now. So we will just call it home assistant. It's going to be a 10 and it's the standard port. Don't have a WebSocket port, and then again, I'll need to grab my. So I'm going to do this. Do this off screen as well. I will add that in. Now, I have no idea if that's connecting or anything, but it's added. This says connected, this doesn't say anything. So that's, that's, that's not great. But anyway, let's assume it's connecting. And now what I'll try to do is let's see if we can't get a value up on this on this main dis display. So we'll go to the display configuration and I'll add a new item. So let's call this uh, page zero. Yeah, so it's got alignment. So we want it to be, I cannot really read this so as we want it to be 
all the way to one side. So it's not great when I scroll down. It would be much nicer if the, the visualization of the display moved with me. Because I'm tweaking this, but I can't actually see what's happening. But anyway, let's put this to, let's say, 70. No, no, that's with uh, this one. Let's say 70%. And is there a height? There's no actual height. There's just width. So let's just call this, um, I don't know, battery, and we'll call it percentage. And if I know. Uh, so we've got that on there. So let's um, let's save that now to the device. And we'll jump over and we can see what that looks like. Okay, so it's just added it in there. So pretty close to what's um, on the UI. So we'll jump back and now we'll see if we can't get a value. So if we add an empty topic. It's saying we can subscribe. We've got event type. So let's say, let's say we want a value. The broker's home assistant. And now we need an actual topic. So let's have a look at what's being spat out of home assistant and we'll see if, I'm not sure if my battery percentage is in here. It probably isn't because we don't, it doesn't really publish everything. That's okay. Let's, uh, all right, let's, let's, uh, like, let's just use the office, office temperature instead. All right, so we'll, we'll, we'll grab that. Um, and we'll jump back to this. We'll just put that in there. And then the payload can contain a string. Again, I'm not entirely sure what that's going to say. So let's just change this to be uh, office temp. I don't know. Let's just save that. Now, I don't. If we look at the payload again. So value we get from this is actually got a it's actually got a state so that's quite a complicated topic so I don't know if this is able to parse that out it's uh, the payload I don't know if we can put state in like that yeah I don't know if it'll read if it'll read a value like that but if we jump over to the device, it's not it's not picking anything up for that. So I think that's just the MQTT configuration. Uh, so let's see if we've got something a bit simpler in Home Assistant. Uh, everything is quite <laughs> complicated. Here are some numbers. Even these have got quite complicated payloads for the boiler. Yeah, so that's obviously interesting in terms of how it fetches that but it doesn't seem that I can parse that value it can contain a string or JSON as you can see there so I don't know if I'll be able to parse a complicated value out which is not brilliant given that most MQTT stuff is complicated and Mm. 
and grab the unit from that. So let's just, yeah, so that's getting its value as, so let's paste the degree C in there and at least make that look nice. So, so they've given an example for fetching the temperature, but even here when they talk about a payload temperature, they don't actually tell you how to, this is like the last step is to put it on the display and then have your outside temperature, but that that isn't really telling me how to parse the JSON or how I tell it what format I want the JSON in. So I'm not really sure what I'm supposed to do with, with that because that's, maybe if we just try the word state. And I'll click save. I mean, to be honest, I don't even know if it's connected to my MQTT broker. Uh, okay, so to test that, let's uh, let's try and publish um, a click from one of the buttons. So let's take one of the buttons. Um, we'll just take this this bar, the first button here. So we'll call this. We'll just change that to send click. We'll save that to the device. And if we take a look at the device now, you can see. Uh, you can see this one up here it says send click and jump back and we'll add another topic and it's got a click so we want to publish this so let's just publish this to let's see if it'll work without let's see if it'll work without um, me configuring the payload so I've turned the, the device over and I'm just going to click Click the button itself and we'll see if those clicks appear, uh, which they don't. So let's configure it with an actual topic. So let's just call this something similar like button one clicked, button one click, I don't know, doesn't matter. Save that to the device. Jump back to that and I'll try and click it now. And we did get an extra topic appear with button. And that's our one and that's our click. Oh, that's blank. Yeah, I know why that's blank because I've, I've, I've uh, put the slash in there, which you don't do. And we can say, Oh, that's, we don't need to worry about that. So that's, all right, so it is connected and it is sending the values. So let's have a look at trying to set up, try to set the colors for the, the LEDs. So the unit itself has two LEDs in each one. So you've got an LED at the front under this, and then there's an LED at the, at the back, and that's what they call the wall LED. So you can see here that we've got a front LED and a wall LED. So if I switch this to, I don't know, they say that yellow, and we switch the front one to a green, say a green and a red, and we'll save that to the device. And if I take a look at it now, None of those LEDs are actually on, which is, yeah, that's not great. <laughs> um, and I've set the color. So I've set the color, so I don't know why they haven't, they haven't come on. They even have their own brightness, so we can crank the brightness up on one of the buttons. That's interesting. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, you can change an individual button. Save that to the device. Um, right, let's see if we can't, uh, let's see who we control this with. So these are the different um, MQTT things that we can pick up on. So we've got the ability to handle clicks, long clicks, click and release. Not sure what the difference between click and click releases. Then we've got three different LED colors. We've got an RGB LED, 
and then an LED. Uh, not sure why we've got five d different um, LED labels. Now we've obviously got our label and our top label. So let's just try LED. And what this will do is it will subscribe to this and I'm going to send so I'll save that and then I'll jump into MQTT Explorer and then I should be able to do LED as the um, and then we'll send a raw payload of oh, I don't know uh, 10,000 no, no, I'll click publish Absolutely nothing happened. If I swim jump over to the device, no change. So I've got another view here where we can see the, the control unit. So I'll have a little play around with this a little bit more. So we'll, we'll jump back to the documentation. And, and I think it does mention that we need to send a color. So let's just pick this, this long color and pop that in here and we'll publish it and absolutely nothing has happened so I'm not sure what that does so this subscribed yeah that's correct uh, really don't know what the difference between these different things is. so let's try this one uh, we'll save that to the device and we will publish and again absolutely nothing is happening this is very encouraging uh, right let, let's let's see if we can change a label right let, let's let's kind of Let's be less ambitious. So if I now send label, if I spell label correctly, uh, and we'll just say, I don't know, Tom. No, so there's, there's, there's nothing actually changing on Yeah, there's there's nothing actually changing. I mean, that's my topic. It is correct. So that's really the click worked. So that's something, but it doesn't seem to be subscribing to any of my. Oh, Tom, and the leading slash on there. Let's try that. Oh, okay. So you can see now that 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 one has changed. Oh, so uh, let's go back to the number and uh, we'll go back to this uh, no we'll go back to this oh sorry so I need to set up so let me add another topic and let's subscribe to the LED one this time so we'll say Button one LED. Save that to the device. And then we'll try, oh, I'll get rid of that leading slash. We'll paste that in, we'll publish. Okay, so nothing changed. Um, maybe this is a Boolean. Nope. Uh, Double check I've got this correct. So I've got my, yeah, so it is subscribing to button one LED. So that, let's try RGB LED. Save that to the device. Okay, right, we've got a light. <laughs> so we've got a light. Now that to me looks like it's 
the back light because that's kind of projecting you can kind of see uh, how can I make that dark? I can't really make that dark enough but it is it is projecting onto the you can see it on my finger a little bit if I get something if I get something white no can't see that tall. yeah you can kind of see it there if I lift it up you can see the red so that one must be the back uh, so I can change the label I can change this RGB LED I really don't know what le the LED one is uh, so that was a bit disappointing couldn't seem to get anything uh, working uh, really so there's clearly a lot to do from their side in terms of the software and the documentation but at least I do know that it, it does work um, and I can change labels uh, and titles and looks like I can change positions of elements on the screen I can toggle some of the the wall LEDs on as well which is which is good and I can get the clicks from it too which is good so there's plenty of scope for configurability I think one of the more interesting aspects of being able to configure the the UI is that you could configure it based on different times so maybe in the evening when it gets dark you want to switch all the buttons to controlling lights or dimming uh, another interesting or possibly interesting approach would be to see if you could uh, maybe power it by battery and then as you pick the device up uh, or you know put it I, I kind of have visions of of making a little frame um, that the unit could th that the unit could sit on so maybe if you had like a, a little case at the back um, it would be able to sit and you could have it as like a little portable display so I have visions of making it or potentially mounting it on something like this so this is an ESP32 S3 box 3 I think this is the, the maybe but essentially this is a little ESP32 unit but it comes with a stand and the stand has a, a compartment for a battery so I have visions of doing something similar with the button plus now I don't know what the battery consumption etc would be like but if you imagine uh, you can kind of mount it in the same way then this thing could become something that's almost portable and if it's portable and you know where it is you could then potentially reconfigure the display so if it was carried from say the kitchen into the living room then it would switch its mode and switch to controlling uh, sort of contextually controlling all the stuff then that's in the living room now I mean I'm getting ahead of myself uh, in terms of what I will be able to do but that's just kind of the ideas that I've got for a unit like this so over the next couple of weeks I'll hope to try and get a bit more information I'm gonna to have to reach out to the to the, the, the manufacturer or the creators of the little unit see if I can't get a bit more information on MQTT and just try to document it and figure out what all of those options are there's probably a firmware update as well which I, I may need to apply and that might again make more sense of what the various drop downs and the, the various MQTT topics that you can subscribe to but I'll do all that in good time that's a topic for another video so once I've got something that's a bit more robust and maybe I've got it on a little frame or something I'll do another video kind of with an update and I think I'll wrap up there. So that's kind of been a, a quick attempt at trying to get my button plus uh, configured and sort of understanding what I can do. It was easy to power up, easy to connect to the Wi-Fi, obviously less easy to actually get it to change. So yeah. Um, but yeah, so that, that's it. If you've enjoyed this video, please do uh, like and subscribe. If you've any questions, uh, you want to know anything more about the button plus please use the comments otherwise that's it i'm tom and thanks for watching